It's Friday, June 15th, 2012. I'm Alex Jones, and this is yet another original edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Straight ahead. Tonight, unconstitutional wars, Obamacare, the National Defense Authorization Act. It's official. The presidency is now a dictatorship. Then, the founder of We Are Changed, Luke Radowski, confronts Rand Paul about Bilderberg. Plus, the Obama war machine announces the invasion of Syria. And James Wesley Rawls joins Alex to discuss the impending economic collapse. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First off tonight, it's official. The presidency is now a dictatorship. And Obama can come or go or even resign, which would be nice. But they replace him with Mitt Romney, which wouldn't be nice. So it's a Hobson's choice. Catch-22, as they say. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. No way out. Rocking a hard place. Out of the fire into the oven. A few more cliches. What do we do? We get rid of the new world order, the globalist, the private federal reserve that runs these puppets. But he's come out and said he will legalize any of the illegal aliens he wants anytime in a jobs program. But citizens can go straight to Hades. But it's, he also launches wars without congressional approval uh, and saying the UN is the boss. He shuts down power plants that aren't owned by his buddies. Uh, he ships guns into Mexico and blames it on his enemies and says they're allowed to engage in perjury. He gives waivers to his buddies on the health care plan, thousands of big companies. So there it is. It's official. The presidency now a dictatorship. We've got to admit that this country is in trouble to ever be able to start reversing what's happened in this nation. All right, shifting gears out of that we now move to Obama war machine announces invasion of Syria. And I see these comments at Infowars.com like, Alex, where's the invasion? You said it was happening. Well, I mean, I know they called the bombing of Libya peace bombs and put Al-Qaeda in there. And I know they say Al-Qaeda is good. And I know I'm bad because I don't like them. But it's on record they've got Al-Qaeda blowing up military and police stations. I'm not saying Assad's some great guy, but compared to Al-Qaeda, he's a good guy. They're trying to overthrow the country, and now they're all over the news saying, invade, bomb, boots on the ground. Every time I walk by a television, it's on the news. CNN, MSNBC, Fox, same message. It says, the U.S. military has completed its own planning for how American troops would conduct a variety of operations against Syria. But they'll just say it's not war. And then they say they're going to put al-Qaeda in charge to kill the Jews and expel the Christians. So... It is certainly in your face, and I'm unpatriotic because I don't support Al CIA, duh. Al Qaeda CIA, duh. Al CIA, duh. I mean, it's just duh, duh. We've got a studio audience out there tonight. Hello, children. Hello, yes. Hey, Obama cares about everybody, folks. He's a, he's a good guy. Uh, by the way, Axelrod has come out in a video interview that we have linked at Infowars.com. And he says that uh, they will restrict free speech in their next administration. But Mitt Romney's bought and paid for with the same folks. Maybe he'll try. Uh, but we've got, uh, well, Mitch McConnell coming out and saying that America was built on free speech, the most important part of the Bill of Rights, and so we need to define speech and defend speech we don't like. And they uh, went on to break all of that down. Kind of like the Republicans shut down the Dixie Chicks and Rage Against the Machine when they had anti-war music or made anti-war statements in 2003, you Republicans are just as bad as Obama. Again, yeah, I don't like Obama, but he's not the evil dog. See, Obama is like a turd from a dog. So is Mitch McConnell. So is Mitt Romney. So I don't want to sit here and discuss the droppings all day and how much I hate them. I don't like dog droppings. You ever get up and you got dogs step in it? It's like, oh, man, I would have let you out if you wouldn't have done that. Come on. Uncool. So I'm not mad at a teleprompter reading dog dropping, uh, whether it's Mitt Romney or Barack Obama. And these guys are all circling the drain. I want to go after the actual dog. I can use more scatological jokes if you'd like. I mean, it's, it's only because it's accurate. I've got a repertoire of uh, lexicons dealing with semantical expressions 
and Shakespearean uh, colloquialisms, but I think it's more important to really cut down to what we're talking about. Obama is a dropping. So are the, the others, as long as they're puppets. That's why it's sad to see Rand Paul moving from being a maverick statesman and saying compromise with droppings. Uh, I mean, you know, and we got some video of some confrontations of that coming up. Uh, but, but we can laugh all day. These guys are waging war against us. They mean business. And it is serious, serious, serious uh, tyranny. Another article with Lord Obama. Obama makes election year change in deportation policy. I already mentioned the whole dictatorial thing, but there's the Associated Press where he will decide if you can stay here. Continuing, Obama trade document leaked revealing new corporate powers and broken campaign promises. And yeah, U.S. companies domestically have basically no way to operate. If you're a foreign globalist in China or India or Mexico, you're above the law and can operate, so that'll cause all the jobs to leave. The leaked document has been posted on the website of Citizens Trade Campaign, a long-time critic of the administration's trade objectives. And, of course, Obama's response is arrest whoever leaked this. They don't ever deny it. They just say arrest everyone uh, who's not a terrorist like they are. Uh, continuing, uh, U.S. to landlords, shut down pot shops or lose your property. doesn't matter if California says you can have medical dispensaries and marijuana. doesn't matter if marijuana is an important part of our economy. doesn't matter if it's less dangerous than alcohol. doesn't matter. They're saying no judge, no jury, federal government, not even the U.S. This headline's wrong out of Huffington Post business. But the bankers that hijacked our country are, we're going to take your business if you let somebody sell marijuana out of it. Kind of like in Seattle where the cops have taken more than half the bars and end up owning them themselves because they sell drugs to themselves in the bathrooms. Decriminalize now. Take the police state's favorite tool away. And I don't smoke, Mary Jane. And I say decriminalize for those of you that say we're a bunch of weed heads. Me, I like antioxidant grape juice myself. All right, let's uh, continue on with the other articles here. Police. Man tries to board plane with explosive. Probably somebody caught one of their operatives doing a drill because he's given a misdemeanor for trying to take the explosives on the aircraft. Uh, it says, uh, we confirmed he didn't have any intent to use them on the plane. Well, then that's fine. Then. Said uh, Lieutenant Nathan Garbe of Redmond Police. As far as we're knowing, he's knowingly knew he had them and, er, and forgot them. That has yet to be confirmed. So uh, I guess everything is fine. Continuing here, foreign holdings of U.S. debt hit record high. That's how the banksters want us. And again, our country wouldn't even be in debt. Ninety plus percent of what we pay is derivatives to, to, to keep the banks propped up. The $15 trillion that we owe to China and the private Federal Reserve, that's just maneuvering us into bankruptcy. They're, they've signed us on to 600 plus trillion of the 1.5 quadrillion in garbage that Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan made. We can pay off the 14, 15 trillion anytime. But it's all about China and everybody putting us down and teaching us that we're garbage. Foreign demand for U.S. Treasury securities rose to record high in April. China, the largest buyer of Treasury debt, increased its holdings slightly after trimming them for two straight months because the globalists are busy imploding Europe. So China's moving out of that. But Europe falls. We go up, but then fall. So it's, it's, it's like two guys jumping out of an airplane, and, and, and one guy's falling further without a parachute, and the other guy's above him going, hey, I'm, I'm not hitting the ground as early as you are. They're like, ha, ha, you're going to splat. And it's like, the guy's like, well, you're 20 feet above me. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm trendy. Whoosh, I get to watch you splat. <laughs> like one split second as you hear the head bust like a melon. Boom. It's like, ah, but it's okay, you're trending, and that's all that matters. Okay, this is teleprompter free news, ladies and gentlemen, and never forget it. We take you now to Clandethu. No, this actually isn't Starship Troopers. Uh, we're not having Tarpley the Brain Bug on right now. Let's go ahead and go to Dr. Adam Spartacus, his codename Weishaupt, founder of the Illuminati. Of all the means I know to lead men, the most effectual is a concealed mystery. The hankering of the mind is irresistible. Oh, come into our secret society. Oh, give us money and dues. Oh, it's too powerful for you to understand. And really all you're being done is ripped off. That's why they get all the elites into perverted and weird stuff where normal people never get sick of the same thing. I never get sick of, 
my beautiful voluptuous wife. I never get sick of cheese enchiladas. I never get sick of swimming in a nice big lake or water skiing. I never get sick of my wonderful children you know, playing in the yard. I never get sick of normal stuff. It's what Madison Avenue wants to make you feel inadequate to sell you cultural death so you'll buy into all their poisons. Take Prozac, drink sodium fluoride. Hey, China says it's good to have mercury in your child's formula. But God forbid we don't lock up all the people that smoke marijuana. All right, we take you now to two different clips of Luke Radowski and others confronting Rand Paul. He used to talk to, uh, in fact, the first clip we should play is a year ago, he talks to Rand Paul, and he talks about the Federal Reserve, the New World Order, the Bilderberg Group, and how I woke Senator Paul up to the Bilderberg Group. Senator Paul says that. And then we've got clips uh, coming up after that, excerpts of just yesterday with Luke and others talking to him about the Bilderberg Group, and they, he will not discuss it with them. So we're really seeing Rand uh, going establishment. It's very, very sad. After these clips, the old clip and the new clip, we'll go to break and come back with our guest on the survival of the Republic and how to prepare yourself and your family. Stay with us. We actually, our organization confronted Ben Bernanke on his ties with the Bilderberg Group as well. Do you do you know anything about the Bilderberg Group? Uh, only what I've learned from Alex Jones. <laughs> do you know? Can you, for the people who don't know what's going on, can you tell people who are the Bilderberg Group if you feel comfortable doing so? Yeah, well, I'm not probably the world's expert on it, but I think it's people who get together, who are very wealthy people, who I think manipulate and use government to their own personal advantage. And I think that's the biggest thing that would help us combat this is that they want to make it out like they're just to help humanity and world government will be good for humanity. But guess what? World government's good for their pocketbook. They're very wealthy and they use government to make more money for themselves. And that's where you expose them. And I think ultimately people are talking about that with the Federal Reserve. Expose the people through an audit maybe like Goldman Sachs and different banks that are making a lot of money off the U.S. taxpayer through these special deals they're getting with the Federal Reserve. Hey, Senator Paul. My name is Luke of We Are Change. We had an interesting conversation before about the Bilderberg Group, and knowing what you know, uh, how can you support Mitt Romney when The Guardian reported he was at the Bilderberg meeting? Senator just got out of the meeting. We're having a private conversation right now. You can make an appointment. Stop by. Sometime. I know you. It's a comfortable question. I know you know a lot about the Bilderberg Group, and we just want to know why would you endorse? I know you're playing politics, but is politics really that dirty? That. Yeah. Rand, the yeah, Bilderberg Group is a very serious group. Can get Jessica online and I'll talk to her about that. A lot of people have a lot of questions about your endorsement of Romney, and I think the Bilderberg one is very pointy. And also Goldman Sachs, when I interviewed you, you called for an audit. Did you uh, find out the problem uh, was able to get back to the apartment? Hey, Rand. Uh, Abby Martin from Media Roots. I just wanted to ask you one quick question. Um, you know, your endorsement for Mitt Romney. People have a lot of questions about it. I just wanted to see your opinion on it. Uh, what do you think about all of Ron Paul's followers and just your father's movement catering to the establishment that's shut you guys out for so long? Are you concerned with what this is going to do for the liberty movement as a whole, sir? Sir, Romney endorses all of the policies that you've been voting against for so long. NDAA, drones. Um, he, he wants to expand the military to twice its size. Do you have any comment on that, sir? Your endorsement to him just blanketly says that all those policies should be enacted. Christy Hightower here for PlanetInfoWars.com. You patriots sure are talking. Have you ever given it a second thought when an employee asks to see your receipt as you leave a store? No? Well, welcome to what we call prison training. Do what you're told, don't think twice. Well, semantics aside, PlanetInfoWars user Sanchez 
explains exactly why showing your receipt is a bad idea in his appropriately titled article, Why You Should Never Show Your Receipt Again. He confronts us with the idea that if you cannot stand up to the little old lady demanding to see your receipt at Walmart, what do you expect to do when the military shows up on your door making demands of you? It's a good reminder that if you, claim your, if you forget to claim your rights, you will lose them. See what other patriots are talking about on planetinfowars.com. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, to the interview portion of InfoWars Nightly News. Our next guest is one of the leading survivalist uh, experts in the United States, one of the most read as well. Survivalblog.com is his website, James Wesley Rawls. He's been an enthusiastic survivalist since his teenage years. He's a uh, survivalist author and lecturer and the editor, again, of survivalblog.com. He has a Bachelor of Arts degree from San Jose State University with a minor degree in military science, history, and military history. And he's a former U.S. Army intelligence officer who held top secret security clearances with special background in investigation and access to sensitive compartmented information. And I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and again, he's also an uh, expert in the uh, nuclear, chemical, biological uh, defense officers course. Uh, or the Army NBC Defense Officers Course, as well as Northern Warfare School at Fort Greeley, Alaska. And I remember back in the mid-90s reading uh, some of his books that had come out in the early 90s, really forecasting much of now what has unfolded. And, and he writes kind of these historical novels, but, but that are slash set in the future. Uh, and uh, the latest is Survivor's a Novel of the Coming Collapse. So he puts it in a novel novel form, but there's real people uh, uh, in these books as well. And it's a great way to get this information across to the general general public. Again, his book is available in stores everywhere and at Infowars.com. We'll also talk about some non-fiction survival books uh, and more today here as well uh, for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. Now, before we went live here, I asked uh, Mr. Rawls some of the subjects he wanted to cover, and they're exactly the ones I wanted to get to. Upcoming vote in Greece, preparedness for the banking crisis from Europe affecting the U.S., general preparedness, preparation for an Internet attack. But I want to get to that after I ask him this first question. We are seeing a total acceleration of open world government being announced just since he was on three months ago or so. We're seeing the announcement of 30,000 armed drones uh, to an enforce Agenda 21, uh, the military openly announcing they'll use foreign troops in America, uh, the head of the army coming out, the civilian head, the CFR two weeks ago saying, we want rapid reaction troops, regular army marines in every citizen uh, you know, uh, area, basically going after the American people inside every city. Just amazing developments that we've seen being prepared in the shadows. It's all rolling out. And my concern is that means they're getting ready to activate. They wouldn't be admitting all this and, and doing public announcements if they weren't getting ready or preparing uh, to go operational. We'll get his take on that. Uh, but we are definitely living in some wild times. And I remember Bob Chapman before he died with his sources in U.S. embassies. My sources then confirmed it that a year and a half ago they were getting rid of dollars and denominating in gold and a spectrum of other currencies at U.S. embassies worldwide. 
uh, the plans for bank holidays in Europe and to control ATMs and use the borders they've been firing back up, not to keep the immigrants out, but to keep the people of Europe in. That's all been announced in the Associated Press, Reuters, you name it, two days ago. So it's one thing to, again, academically, intellectually follow history, follow the documents that leak, the sources, to see this being built in the warehouse. I mean, it's kind of like those old films from World War I, World War II, where they open up this big giant curtain and there's a battleship and then it slides into the water. We peeked behind and saw the battleship being built against us. Now the curtains are open, they're chopping the blocks, it's going into the water. And it's announcing, don't run, we're your friend. Uh, so uh, this is really serious. I want to ask him first, does he agree that things are accelerating? And B, why are they moving so quickly now? So again, the proprietor of survivalblog.com, James Wesley Rawls. James, thanks for coming on. Um, you heard my uh, lengthy diatribe question there. Give us your analysis on that point. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, yes, I, I believe that things are accelerating. There's uh, a lot of policy planners in the Obama White House and especially in Europe that are pretty frantic right now. They see the European Economic Union falling apart at the seams, the whole southern periphery of the Eurozone seems to be in huge trouble economically. There's virtually no way that they could repay their loans. The, the Greeks back in May uh, had a referendum which basically failed on austerity. And since then, they've been under the, the period of a internal agreement with the EU called the Minimonio, where they've es established bridge loans but basically everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen with this vote on Sunday. Uh, we're recording this uh, here uh, June 15th, uh, a Friday. In just two days, there's gonna be this, this second vote in Greece and no one's really sure what's going to happen at the tail end of this. Uh, all I can say for cert with certainty is there's virtually no way they can pay this money back. It's a mountain of debt and interest rates are starting to spike in Greece, Italy, and Spain. And that's indicative that the, the euro isn't going to hold in, hang in there, that there's going to be a collapse of the euro. In the short term, I, I think we could see the dollar gain value versus the euro. And there could be some economic benefit briefly here in the United States. But in the long run, because our debt situation is almost as bad as Greece's. Sure, it creates a black hole effect anyways. It's like they're falling, but we're falling but, uh, you know, right beside them as well. But it creates a momentary uh, uplift as people run into the dollar in fear. It's relative safety in the dollar. Uh, a long-term prognosis is, is just as bad. In fact, in total dollars, it's much worse. It, uh, you know, as a percentage of GDP, it's worse in Greece. But if you look at the total indebtedness, it's huge in the United States. And inevitably, what's going to happen is a certain chain of events. We'll have chaos in Europe. We'll probably see a banking crisis there, uh, full-scale bank runs, bank holidays, and all that. Interest rates will spike. But then the credit rating agencies like Moody's and Fitch are going to downgrade the United States. And when that happens, that's the key trigger of it because we've been under an era of ZERP, which is zero interest rate. Um, when, we get, when we get away from ZERP and interest rates start to go up and they have to go up when the dollars, when, when the US government's uh, credit worthiness is downgraded, uh, people are gonna start demanding more and more interest to continue to invest in US treasuries. At that point, all bets are off because the current debt progressions are based on essentially zero interest rates um, in terms of true interest versus inflation. If we start having to pay 3%, 4%, 5% on short-term treasury paper and anywhere from five to 15% 
on long-term paper, they, the, our ability to repay our debts will be no better than uh, the nation of Greece. And we'll go through our own crisis, just like this, but on a grand scale. Once interest rates move, watch out. Well said. Uh, one more question along these lines, then I want to get into the other points that uh, you'd like to get into, because I've, you know, I agree with, uh, agree with you, they're extremely important. I remember, oh, I guess back in 1998, so almost 14 years ago, economist George Humphrey, who's also a successful private businessman here in Austin, Texas, city council a person as well, a friend of mine, saying the global elite, the private Federal Reserve, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they're going to sell these derivatives, have government sign on, it'll be over a thousand trillion, they'll implode it in the next 10 to 15 years, out of that they'll announce a bank of the world as the savior. I mean, Humphrey literally on my radio show and in some books and tapes he put out, laid it completely out with absolute precision. And then other people, you know, I mean, I remember Bob Chapman five, six years ago, countless others saying, you know, this is done on purpose. This is a consolidation. They get us to sign on to Too Big to Fail uh, in 2008. All the experts I interviewed said it's designed to get worse. Europe, then Asia, then the U.S., you know, they'll fall like dominoes. It's a consolidation. Bank of the World will be announced. Uh, I saw Bilderberg members brag, like Etienne Davignon, that yes, we set up the euro to consolidate Europe. They, they designed it to bankrupt things and to, quote, have it fail and then offer a new superstructure as the answer. But a lot of the experts I agree with now say that they've overdone it so bad that they may even destroy themselves. But clearly, uh, this was engineered to a great extent, but they may have you know, gone too far. Or all these guests I had on, all these experts, uh, and, and my own analysis, we were wrong, but we were right. We were, we were right about what was going to happen, but, but we were wrong about the elite being in, uh, in control of it. Uh, I know that's kind of some Rumsfeldian logic, but I want to get from you your take on that. Uh, I mean, is there a method to this madness of command destruction, post-industrial world? I mean, the elites say that's their plan, or is that more their destructive, psychopathic excuse in, in that they want to destroy, but they also want to be control freaks, so they lie to themselves and think that they're in control of it, like Hitler attacking on three fronts? Uh, complex statement, but you're a military historian. Give us, give us your take on that. Is this, is this under the elite's control? Is this pre-designed? I think it is pre-designed. I think uh, their intent is at least a partial implosion. Uh, whether or not uh, they're going to remain in control remains to be seen. I think that there's a good chance that the situation could get completely away from them. And their planned announcement of a global currency and a global economic union uh, might very well fall apart. It's difficult to say what the end result's going to be. All I can say is we're going to have some incredibly turbulent times for the next couple of years and that people need to get themselves prepared. Um, I think that the, the citizenry of Greece has the right idea right now. Uh, they're pulling out a billion dollars a day of their deposits from Greek banks. Common sense dictates that Americans should probably be doing the same thing. If they realized just how unbacked our, their bank accounts were, uh, right now there's just, you know, pennies on the dollar, really. If, if everyone went to go get their money out of the bank simultaneously, um, there are certain, we would see the banks cleaned out in the, in the course of just two days. Yeah, the number was three cents on the dollar two years ago. Now I'm told it's less than two cents on the dollar of physical cash is actually there. Right. The, the, the total money supply that's been printed or minted here in the United States is only about a trillion dollars. Um, that, uh, or excuse me, uh, eight, well, I'm sorry, 800, 800 billion, I think, is the, uh, is the exact figure. But that's, that's nothing compared to the total money supply, uh, which is enormous. So uh, the... What, what people have in their banks are just electronic digits. 
and there's no way that they can start to even start to cover withdrawals if they start to happen. And on Thursday evening, I posted a piece in my blog titled 20 Reasons Why America's Next Bank Holiday Will Be a Nightmare. I'd recommend that people take a look at that. Let's go over that right now. Since you raised that point, it's at survivalblog.com. We're linked to it at infowars.com. Go over that for us. Well, basically, a bank holiday, which we haven't seen in the United States since the 1930s, would be a government-mandated closure of part or all of the banks in the United States to stem off the flood of withdrawals that will take place if we have a bank run. And in the event of a bank holiday, in a modern era, it's not just a physical run with people standing in line in their banks. They will cut, off and cut people off electronically as well. All online banking will be suspended. All ATM machines will be shut down. Well, banks already, this is already happening in Europe, as you've stated, banks already act. I mean, I've gone in to get a few thousand out, and they try to refuse until I throw a fit. Uh, and, uh, I mean, this is outrageous. Continue. Well, the, the other thing that's really frightening that I, that I pointed out in that article is that all of the SNAP payments, which are on EBT cards now, they used to be food stamps, all those SNAP payments are also negotiated through the, ba the bank check clearance system. So if they shut down the check clearance system, they're also going to shut down food stamps. That's right. And, of course, the Federal Reserve uh, runs that check clearance system and its regional systems totally strangle holding our economy. I want to get back into your 20 points here, but just thinking about how accurate I've been, you've been, Ron Paul, uh, countless others, G. Edward Griffin. I mean, we have been so incredibly dead on watching the globalists because they're operating in plain view. The, you know, their, their whole attack pattern is designed for a zombified sleep state population who are victims of this. But it's really amazing looking back at my 17 years, your 20 plus years, other people 50 years, how the old timers absolutely foresaw exactly what was coming and held it back for a long time. But now it's here. I mean, you know, it's like a kid waiting for Christmas. It finally comes. You can't believe it. But this is a, the anti-Christmas What's your statement on that point? Because, yeah, I mean, here we are, you, you were on just a year ago, and then a few months ago, talking about bank runs in Europe and, and, and you know, ATM withdrawals and, and capital controls and the, and the TSA getting ready for it. Now it's all admitted. I mean, it's just, it, it's, again, I'm not patting us on the back here. It's really mind-blowing, though, how accurate the Patriot movement has been. Do you think that's checkmated or put in check the establishment? I mean, does that freak them out, how accurate we were, reverse engineering with the available intelligence, what we were dealing with? Well, perhaps. Uh, certainly, uh, we're, we've been a lot more accurate than the talking heads on the economic shows on uh, CNBC, uh, who, are, who are basically still touting uh, buy and hold stock purchases, and that the, you know the bottom has been reached in the real estate market, and, and a lot of other fantasies. Uh, it's it's people like you mentioned uh, the late Bob Chapman, who is one of my absolute heroes. Uh, he passed away just a week ago, uh, but for 30 years, Bob was warning that this financial reckoning day was going to come, and he was absolutely right. And uh, he was one of my mentors. Let's get back to your 20 points. I'm, I'm sorry to digress. It's just important to point out people watching for the first time. This is not a game. Is this a game? Is this a joke? Is this pessimism porn? Because you said three years ago, we never left the recession. I said that. We all said it. Now they admit, oh, yeah, we never left it. It's a depression. They're lying to us. Well, yeah, we are being lied to systematically. And people need to wake up and... No, it's at beyond at this point. It's beyond just political rhetoric. It's beyond uh, the you know the, the awakening stage. At this point, people need to get physically prepared because we're going to see the onslaught of all the effects. You know, you, you're seeing what's going on with Greece with their economy cratering and unemployment rate over thirty percent effectively. We're going to see the same thing here in the United States. We'll see our own bank runs. We'll see our own bank holidays. Uh, 
it could get very ugly very quickly. So people need to make tangible preparations. By the way, I don't want to scare people, but I got a call from a very, a very famous person uh, just a few, well, actually last week, and they were like, wow, I just talked to this big banker, and they said this could happen in a month, and they actually put dates on it, and, and that everything was going to basically start here soon if, if, if things you know, weren't, quote, fixed in Europe, as you just said. So I made some phone calls, and they said to some separate sources I have, and they said yes. And then I noticed that all the big money has been busy getting their money out. So, so how close are we to the trigger that we're already seeing in Europe? I think we're fairly close, but as I indicated earlier, we're going to see a lag here in the United States where, in fact, the U.S. dollar is going to benefit. Uh, Switzerland has already instituted kind of reverse currency controls. They had too many deposits coming into Switzerland because it was seen as a safe haven, and it was making the Swiss franc too strong and hurting Swiss exports out of Swiss industry. Negative interest rates. Yeah, yeah so... They actually have capital controls in reverse. And, you know, most countries like Zimbabwe you know, are trying to keep currency in the country. In Switzerland, they're trying to keep it out. I think in the short term, we may actually see the United States as a short term safe haven for capital coming out of Europe. But that the worm will turn just a few months later. Uh, I think certainly by this fall, October, November, maybe where we see our crisis here in the United States. Well, we just saw that a few weeks ago where the euro goes way down, so the dollar goes up, and then the dollar went down too, and then so it's, it's, it's gyrating. Oh, definitely. Uh, ditto with the precious metals. Uh, I have a lot of readers that are a little panicky right now saying, well, what's, what's wrong with my silver and gold? Why, why, why have they gone down? It's only because... The economic crisis in Europe is so bad that there's a scramble for cash and people are liquidating every asset imaginable. They're selling stocks, they're selling bonds, and they're even selling precious metals to meet margin Well, speaking costs. of Bob Chapman, he predicted that, that as things first start really imploding, at first, tangibles will go down because people are dumping them, you know, but also there's a depression within the inflation. There's inflation in currencies, but depression in the real economy, but long term, if you look at it, things are only going to go up as those currencies die. Right, yeah. In the short term, we're going to see a mix of both inflation and deflation simultaneous here in the States. In the long run, though, it'll be nothing but inflation and more inflation. All right, go through your other 20 points. I'm, I'm, I'm... Uh, well, just to summarize them briefly, uh, I mentioned uh, the importance of the uh, SNAP payments from the USDA or what used to be called food stamps. The, the, the implications of that are huge. It, you know, it'll be bad enough when people find their ATM shut down, and most people only keep a few hundred dollars in cash at most at home. But what about the people that are living on the ragged edge? What happens when their food stamp payments, their EBT cards, no longer work? There will be blood in the streets. We could see major riots in the urban areas very quickly after a banking holiday is announced because, and again, those EBT cards will be non-functional. Uh, now, the other thing is most people as, don't carry cash for even day-to-day -day expenses. Most people who buy gasoline or diesel fuel pay at the pump with a credit card. The credit card processing systems could shut down as well. Now, they're partially delinked from banking but inevitably, if banking shuts down, the credit cards are going to have to shut down. Likewise, online payments like PayPal, since they use the credit card system for, in, in their milieu, and they have to have access to banking inevitably, you know, for a short period of time, they might be able to get by with just credit card processing, but they have to touch banking at some point. Online banking or online payments like PayPal will shut down as well. The only on online payment that's going to be working that I can see would probably be Bitcoin because it's not tied even to any currency. So anyone who doesn't already have a Bitcoin account should go ahead and set one up just as a contingency because we very well might see uh, no way to make 
online transactions outside of the Bitcoin arena. And then we know what happens. The same thing's happening in Europe. Give the bankers more power. They'll fix things if you shine over everything, if you accept carbon taxes. How long do you expect them to try to bring this country into cardiac arrest until we acquiesce to their financial terrorism? I think they'll push as hard and as fast as they can to try to, to back us into a corner. If, if they try to, to threaten us with the same sort of blackmail, really, that uh, Greece and Spain and Italy have been put through with austerity measures, uh, things, could, things could be very, very ugly very quickly. And don't underestimate the ability of American politicians to force uh, through the, the whole mass media uh, to force America into accepting a global currency and into accepting uh, these, what they're going to call austerity measures, but it really is going to be the looting of America that takes place. We're going to see already in Greece, they've been told, well, yes, we can extend you some more loans if you give us all of your gold. Well, they may ask for all the, all the gold that's left in Fort Knox before all is said and done. And by the way, uh, as Ron Paul has pointed out, we really don't know how much gold there really is left in, in Fort Knox. Incredible. Uh, separately, they're trying globally, as you know, in Europe, the United States, to pass all these draconian anti-free speech, anti-internet um, pieces of legislation. And then there's separately a National Geographic saying, oh my gosh, the big sunstorm's coming up. Uh, could knock out the power grid, knock out the internet. Oh, we've got to give our internet rights up. Stuxnet, which is admittedly a U.S.-Israeli operation, uh, that's not uh, that's not debatable. So we've got we've got all of this happening, all of this uh, beginning to unravel here, and we're being told uh, that we've got to prepare, you know, for a cyber attack on the internet. But then I even read Pentagon reports where they go, we'll attack ourselves to test things. This looks like the perfect false flag that during this economic implosion to convert us to the new world order, they're not going to want James Wesley Rawls, Alex Jones, and others out there on the internet being able to counter their lies minute by minute. I mean, already when they put lies out, I'm able to respond to it, and the White House has responded to us on subjects like shutting down power plants, we're definitely having an effect. Uh, and I tell you, it feels good to know there's thousands of prominent people because it'd be scary if we were alone. Thank God people like you and others. Uh, but then I see things like Rand changing directions, joining partly with the neocons and really changing his body language and things and looking scared. We've had reporters go talk to him in person. And I'm seeing a lot of people line up and I'm seeing a lot of people we thought were 100% in our camp not all the way, and folks we didn't think in our camp are showing they are. I mean, I'm really seeing battle lines being drawn. I mean, I'm ranting there, but let's uh, give us your take on the whole Rand Paul endorsement of Mitt Romney and endorsing uh, uh, Iran sanctions his dad was against and hiring a bunch of neocons. Uh, Alex, I think you have it exactly right. I think battle lines are being drawn. And just like with World War II, uh, before the war, everyone lined themselves under the Allied or Axis powers. We could very well see a situation, uh, much like World War II, where these cabals get formed, and uh, they could be shifting in the short term. But uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see where uh, Iran ends up, where Russia ends up, where China ends up. It, Something tells me that the United States is not going to have a lot of friends in World War III. It, and what we're seeing right now economically could very well, in the course of the next five years, turn into the beginnings of World War III. It could get literally that bad. Already we're seeing uh, governments faced with you know, votes of no confidence, but things could get to the point where it's not just internal dissent and internal politics. We could see, you know, the push of bayonets by the time things are done. You know, I'm often fond of saying that when you stop making your payments on your car, they come take your, you tow your car away. Well, what happens when a government defaults on its sovereign debt? 
that they may come tow the whole kingdom away. Well, that's what I was going to get to next. Uh, look, I see these neocon publications going, Jones doesn't like the wars in Syria and Libya. He must be for the Muslims. For them, there, our government is using Al Qaeda in these countries, and it's in the LA Times. They're not even hiding it. It's the height of insulting our intelligence. They're putting, you know, they say if they overthrow Syria, they're going to kill all the Jews and force the Christians out. And I'm supposed to get behind that. I mean, it, it, it's total cuckoo land. The Russians are encircled, uh, threatening to nuke Europe now. They didn't even talk like that during the Cold War. Uh, there's all sorts, as you said, battle lines being drawn. They have neocons saying, Jones must work for the Russians because he doesn't want to have a war. No, I work for America and my family. Bankers captured America. They're planning to, it's bankers launching drones. It's bankers raising my taxes. It's bankers setting up highway checkpoints. It's bankers launching the TSA. If the Russians were doing any of this, I'd be saying a war. You know, I, but we're so designed to fight the Chinese or the Russians, and the Chinese, of course, are allied with the banksters, that, 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 that we can't imagine an economic, like Cicero said, the enemy that comes openly to the gate with their standard, no, no problem. It's the internal infiltrator. How do you get America, the police, the military, who on average are great people, I've talked to a lot of military and police, to understand we've already been taken over, the flag's only up there in symbol, and that we're being led into something that's probably meant to destroy us. I mean, if you look at all the pieces, I, I think you're hinting at the fact we're being set up. I, I think we definitely are. Um, and the, the amount of internal dissent, uh, I think, is only going to be exacerbated. You know, there's already the red state, blue state paradigm. But could you imagine if that got to the point where we literally got to the point where states wanted to secede from the Union, just like in the 1860s. It could come to that. And internationally, as I mentioned before, we could see the equivalent of World War II, uh, but here, here we might even be tossing nukes around. It, it, the, the full implications of this are absolutely staggering. And to think that the average American is still really concerned with what the what the movie stars are wearing to the latest film premieres and who got who pregnant it's just it absolutely boggles me to think that that are still caught up in the bread and circus oh it's the matrix speak to that because i still occasionally have somebody stop their motorcycle and go hey mr tinfoil hat most people don't now but even if they're awake they say what do you do and then to watch the tabloids and dancing with the stars and I mean I mean again I'm not abnormal that I can't go to a movie now and not think about this stuff I'm not abnormal that when I'm at a swim meet with my kids all I'm thinking about is this because this is their this is this is the same stuff we saw before World War 1 and World War 2 but now with all these super weapons as you were saying and you just wish people imagine what's going to happen in America as this whole it's like 10 torpedoes of crisis are coming at us. All 10 may hit us, three may only hit us, but some of them are gonna hit us, and I don't know what's gonna happen if during the Great Depression, university estimates are seven million people died, starved to death, or die from complications of malnutrition when people were Christian and hardworking and 90% somewhat self-sufficient. Now we're 90% urban, totally unself-sufficient. Half of the 10% in the rural areas are somewhat self-sufficient. I mean, it's almost like a road-like scenario, and for those of us that are informed, it's not we're elitist, oh, we're informed, you're dumb. We're like, for God's sakes, I wish you'd listen to us, and get because being prepared is one of our only checks against this. I'm ranting, but continue commenting on what it's like for you to see the zombie public and then to know, I mean, Medvedev and Putin are saying, we're lining nukes up. If you move missiles in, we're going to nuke you. Obama says, I'm moving the missiles in. And generally from history, I mean, am I, am I wrong in saying generally the Russians don't bluff? I mean, they don't. I've seen a lot of cases where they threaten stuff like this. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much straight talkers when you come down to it. They have their, you know, they have their propaganda arm. But uh, what you hear out of what used to be the Politburo and now out of the, the, uh, the Russian federal government is pretty much what you see is what you get. And if they're, if they're posturing that way, you can see that the blood is in the water and they're doing, you know, 
in in Russia, they always think in terms of Mother Russia, and they will always keep that as the bottom line. They will never compromise their sovereignty. And when it comes, when push comes to shove, they'll do whatever it takes. They'll side with whoever they need to side with to make sure that Mother Russia survives. <clears throat> now, um, it's it's difficult to say how it's all going to play out. And like you, I'm amazed to see so many people still in zombie mode. But it's encouraging to see people reading blogs like mine and listening to radio shows like yours to see how many people truly are waking up. They're making tangible, practical steps to getting their families prepared in terms of water filtration and food storage, communications equipment, and so forth, because they recognize that there is going to be disruption ahead. And as you pointed out before, we live in a much more fragile society than we lived in in the 1930s. It's, things are going to come unglued in the next 24 months, as near as I can tell. Well, I'm seeing the public, and even the media admits this, now that there's less money and we're in a deep recession slash depression, more fights, more arrogance. I mean, a bunch of spoiled brats, and, and, and I'm spoiled too compared to my dad or my grandfather, because they grew up on farms. I mean, I can't fix one-tenth of what my dad can fix. He couldn't fix what his dad could fix. Because back then, you had to make the combine work because there wasn't money to go to the bank. And, and I think about my people like my grandfather who got up at 4.30 in the morning and quit working at you know 7, 8 at night. And, and I've worked on that farm during the summer. And then I look at what Americans are like today. My God, they have no idea what they're facing. If the Great Depression could bring people like my grandfather and his parents to their knees, what is this going to do to us? Yes, we, we live in a sissified generation and a dumbed-down generation. And unfortunately, we're going to see a massive die-off. I can't see any other solution. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's going to come to that. It won't be anything that we precipitate. We're just going to be spectators and hopefully uh, going to pull through this. But we're going to witness perhaps as much as 80% of the American population dying off by the time all is said and done. Because if there is an orchestrated collapse, we are unfortunately living in a house of cards. And the vast majority of the citizenry has no preparation. They have two or three days worth of food at home. Uh, half a tank of gas, no stored fuel. They are going to be completely behind the power curve, and they are going to be like sheep for the slaughter. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm up to this. And then you look at the average person, they revel in chicken-necked weakness. I mean, I went to a couple stores yesterday with my son, and I was watching the people, and I mean... I, I guess television and this soft culture did it, but it looked like they'd been shot with like a mutation slash weenie gun. And the women were, were henpecking their husbands and, and boyfriends and henpecking at the registers and henpecking at me. At the, I mean, I'm not trying to be negative because there's a lot of great people, but it seems like when you're in the city, you're really around a bunch of scum. You get out in the country, it's a little bit better. Have you noticed this? Oh, definitely. Uh, the the level of civility in our society is dropping. Uh, the, as I referred to it previously, the sissification of our society is definitely in full swing. Uh, very few people are willing to stand up for what's right. They just want to go along and get along and make as few waves as possible. Blob and, along. They want to like blob along. Yeah. Yeah, and it... I hate to say it, but it's, it's like those websites you see that have all the pictures of the Walmart shoppers. That's the society we're living in. We, we live in a society of, of sheep, really. Sheeple, as uh, one radio host used to refer to them. Uh, we have an overweight generation, an undereducated generation, and a generation that's fixated on, you know, their day-to-day -day pleasures. And when true hard times come, they're going to be completely unprepared. And they're going to fall apart mentally and physically. They're not up to the task physically because they're overweight, out of shape, and 
you know, eating, you know, horrible food. Mentally, they're not up to the challenge either. We have a huge number of people that are addicted to either non-prescription drugs, uh, illicit drugs, or on, are on, uh, you know, they're on everything from blood thinners to, uh, to mood altering drugs to you, you name it. Uh, we have seven or eight percent of the population now that's uh, insulin dependent, diabetic. What's going to happen to all these people when the power grid goes down? It's it's going to, it's again, it's going to be a huge die off. Well, look at Katrina. The government couldn't and wouldn't even help people. And it was an absolute hellhole right there. But the government wouldn't let the people walk out on the highways and get away, though. I mean, it just shows a total predatory view. I want to run through some more of the points here. Let's let's look at the upcoming vote in Greece. Uh, preparedness for banking crisis. We already kind of mentioned that, but recapping it. Then general preparedness and then preparedness for a Internet attack or uh, mega flare. Okay. Well, it's a lot to cover it in, in uh, one interview, but... I, I think it is important that people get prepared. Uh, the, uh, in terms of a banking crisis, people need to keep a lot more cash at home. And as I pointed out in my piece in Survival Blog, a, a good chunk of that ought to be in uh, five cent coins, in nickels, because it's the only currently circulating coin in the United States still being minted uh, that's worth its face value. Everything else is just a token. Uh, granted, pre-1981 uh, pennies are worth, uh, what, 2.6 times face value right now, but you have to sort those, and that's not even worth it's worth the time to do so. Great but, point. People can make a whole living off getting bulk pennies, picking them out, and nickels, but folks don't even want to do that. They'd rather just get a welfare check. Yeah, they'd, ra they'd, rather, they'd rather do that. But, uh, again, people need to get prepared for this coming banking crisis. I think... We will have a delay before it takes place here in the States because the, the dollar and U.S. Uh, investments are going to be seen as the safe haven temporarily. But this is your window of opportunity, folks. Get a wad of cash, and it should be in one and five dollar bills, not large bills, because you're going to need to be able to make change. If there's a banking crisis, people are going to have to revert to cash for just about everything. Stock, you know, stock that cash away, develop a good hiding place at home that won't be found. Make sure at least two family members know where it is in case you don't come home someday. Get your food storage squared away. Get a water filter. Make plans to team up with your country cousins or, or, or friends that you have that live in lightly populated rural farming areas because you may need to depend, with, depend upon them you may need to double up with them. For anyone who's already at retirement age or has the opportunity to retire early or who is self-employed, I recommend that you go ahead and make the move now. You're actually behind the power curve. You really should have moved several years ago so you'd have a chance to get established, put all your fences in, get your water supply squared away, plant a garden. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I didn't have to be in Austin, which is a great town, and to have the crew here, I would be – thousand miles from nowhere. I mean, I would be out of here j just on the chance there's going to be this collapse. And now we're just hoping for a way to get out of it. That's my next question. And I want you to abbreviate and finish the other points. We'll have you back for a second interview very soon as this all accelerates. Is there any way right now to avert this? And on a scale of one to 10, if we can't avert it, I mean, are we looking at a three, a four, God forbid, a worse of a collapse? Well, uh, I don't think it can be avoided at this point. Now, it could be delayed quite a while. Uh, they might have a currency reform here in the States. As I mentioned in my blog, they might even do something as severe as dropping a zero or even two zeros off the dollar, which would cause a overnight boost to the economy because uh, suddenly uh, gasoline, instead of being $3 a gallon, will be back to 30 cents a gallon. And a movie ticket instead of nine dollars will be ninety cents. Uh, so it'll give people the illusion of prosperity in the short term. Uh, there, there could be an event like that that, that would kind of carry us over, basically muddle through a a depression for a couple of years. But in the long term, things are going to break down. 
we will see a full-scale economic collapse. It's at this point, because of the national debt alone, I see this absolutely inevitable. And it's kind of a perpetual motion machine. The global architects admit they set this in motion to consolidate total power. That's why they do rule the earth, though. They're wicked, they don't care, they're ruthless, and they're willing to gamble it all. They're willing to gamble it all. You know, the Rothschilds on record helped fund Hitler up front. Then he was even able to kill some of the French Rothschilds during the war. I mean, these globalists, they really are willing to gamble it all for total power. And so they're either going to get everything or we're going to end up defeating them in the process. Yeah, that, well, if nothing else, they have, they have clearly demonstrated they're willing to use the citizenry of every nation as their pawns. Uh, <laughs> we're... We need to be proactive so we don't end up being pawns on the chessboard. We basically have to move ourselves off the chessboard at this point. People need to hunker down in a secure area. You know, the hill country out uh, of Austin is not all that bad. There's a lot of other areas like that in the United States. Um, I'm particularly fond of what I refer to as the American Redoubt, which is in the inland northwest, which consists of Idaho, Montana, Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington. Uh, there's, uh, there's going to be some fairly safe places, relatively safe places, and there are no full-on guarantees, but from an actuarial standpoint, your, your, your safety will be much higher in those areas. Yeah, well, I do live in the hill country, and I, and, but I only live in the edge of it. It takes me 35 minutes to get to work because I'm in South Austin, so it's basically just straight from Austin out to the country. But, you know, I got a little piece of property. There's ranches around me, but I'm not naive. You know, I'm only about three miles off a major road. Uh, I guess people like yourself, but also Joel Skousen, they're saying maybe have another just even piece of property with a trailer or something further out. I mean, I'm springing this on you, but perhaps next time you can tell me. What's the safest area of the hill country? How far would I have to be out? Like 100 miles from Austin? Oh, uh, 50 or more probably. Being cru the crucial thing, though, is to make sure you're on the side road of a side road. You don't want to be along any natural line of drift for people fleeing the cities. All the major highways are going to get flooded with refugees. And then the, the major farm-to-market roads, the side roads, to a lesser extent, but even fewer people are going to end up on the side roads of the side roads. That's where you want to be. And that's my advice to basically, e even for my listeners uh, in the Midwest or in the Deep South, if you could be back on the side road of a side road, the vast majority of the problems are not going to come looking for you. You'll be able to avoid them. Aren't guns going to be the big equalizer, though? If you've got millions and millions being sold a month and roving bands, because I saw this when a hurricane hit Houston. I was at our family ranch in East Texas uh, hunting and hanging out with family, and there were just people from Houston everywhere. Crime did explode, but all that happened was a bunch of looters just got shot. I, I mean, that's going to be incredible, because, I mean, even where I live, I've got a fence, a wall up, I got dogs. They're going to wake me up. I got cameras. You come over. I'm going to get up. You're dead. I, I mean, it's it's. I mean, I could kill. I'm not. I'm not waiting for it. I'm not happy about it. But my children are going to stay safe. I'll kill 500 people. They come on my property. I mean, it's over. Well, the the, the people that are well armed are not going to get picked on. And it's just like if you look at urban crime right now, the people that get picked on are the people that are most vulnerable: the elderly, the infirmed, and the unarmed. The, if and when we do see a major societal collapse, these roving bands are going to come out of the big cities. They're going to pick on, uh, you know, your, your Prius driving Birkenstock wearing neighbors first. They're not going to want to pick on somebody who's well armed, especially in a situation where their advanced medical care has gone away. So if they drive up on something that's got a rock wall and then behind that a fence. Uh, they're going to figure out that's a, but, but in a way, isn't a fortress like that even more obvious in a way? Well, my, you know, Joel Skousen has always said, you want to have your house just completely blend in. But 
you have to make compromises to, to your architecture if you do that. I'd actually rather look like a tough nut to crack. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, that's what I'm behind. I mean, I'm, I'm behind. I mean, I've did. I, I believe all this. I've built multiple things, and and I'm and I'm gonna. I mean, I'm ready. Well, I, I think you're going to pull through just fine, and, and most people that are well prepared are going to pull through. Again, if they're on a side road of a side road, and again, the looters are going to are are, are not going to want to pick on you. You start cranking rounds off over their heads. They're going to go find a softer target. Target. They're not going to want to take casualties. They're going to go pick on Granny down the road. Incredible. Uh, in closing, uh, this has been an amazing back and forth discussion. Uh, a lot more is at survivalblog.com. But let me just try to shut up. I'll have to actually turn my mic off for about six, seven minutes. Let you finish. Get into uh, preparedness for an internet attack, either false flag or launched by the Chinese or Russians. Where do you see the real threat coming from, and how do you prepare for that? Well, I think there's definitely a threat. In fact, uh, my my blog site recently had a attack. It was a denial of service attack where they they put thousands of pings on my site to try to shut it down. Uh, but we transitioned to a cloud server and, and basically laughed it off. But we could see far more sophisticated attacks in the future. There could be um, computer viruses. There could be email attacks. Uh, we could see the government itself attempt to shut down part or all of the internet. People need to make plans for a world without the internet in a worst case. And it's important that people go to their favorite websites and look up the dotted quad address, the IP address for the, the IVP4 or the IVP6 now address for each of those sites and literally write down the, the dotted quad address. I got to interrupt again. I got, you're always so on target. All my IT people said this years ago. Now they admit the UN and the US government admit they're going to take our websites away under these treaties for no reason. People won't be able to find us. We're going to be blocked in the Google, which is really NSA search engine. We've got to have the real IP address. Stress that again, but in layman's terms for folks like me. Sure. Um, if you do a web search, in Google or Bing or wherever, search for IP lookup. And there are tools that you can, uh, online tools, there are web pages where you paste in the URL, the name of the web, your favorite websites, and then it will spit back the IP addresses for each of them. That's the easy way to find them. Again, IP lookup. Uh, bookmark an IP lookup page and start writing down and bookmarking the dotted quad addresses for all your favorite websites. Sites like InfoWars.com or, or sites like mine or whatever. Get those written down and literally carry that in your wallet because you never know where you're going to be if there's an internet shutdown or under what circumstances you might have to flee your own home and end up somewhere else where you don't have your uh, desktop computer or your laptop with you. So you literally want to keep those in your wallet. That's step one. Step two is uh, for the more advanced computer users that are listening to this, you need to explore what's called the dark net. Do a web search on dark net and get yourself set up. It does involve installing a little software on your computer you do, it's not as easy to use as uh, the internet through a standard web browser, but it's important that people develop a presence in the dark net so that if the main internet disappears someday, there's a good possibility that the dark net will still be up and running. It's far beyond the scope of this interview to try to describe it all here. But I know that a lot of people listening to this are quite intelligent and quite computer savvy. You, you folks need to take the time to research what the dark net is and how to get on the dark net. And as I mentioned previously, uh, you also need to get set up with a Bitcoin uh, account so that you can uh, transact business on the dark net it may become crucial in the next couple of years because the internet as we know it may be either partially or completely taken away from us. 
Yeah, we know governments and corporations aren't just digging in physically. They're building their own secret networks and public networks and gearing up to weather the storm by design. Uh, the only question is, will enough of us get ready for this to perhaps slow it down or back it off or by God's good graces, stop it. But governments have said it's a foregone conclusion. The Rockefeller Foundations, the British Ministry of Defense, they were writing this in the 60s plan for around this time. Now that stuff's all public. They engineered it. They want it to happen. And that's, yeah. I mean, people are like, oh, you guys are gloom and doom. Look, by the grace of God, if we avert this, that's great. The social engineers want this. It's on record. And you're insane if you don't get ready. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, yes, I do. Um, now, to get back to practical, tactical steps, uh, beyond the dark net, the other thing that I recommend that, that people do is get themselves licensed as amateur radio operators and get an HF radio. You need to get a, or, or a multi-band, all-band radio, but HF is the crucial band to be able to access. You need to be, if, if you can't pick up a handset and key it up and be operating, uh, you know, between um, 10 and 40 megs, you're, you're behind the power curve. You, you want to be able to have a radio, preferably on an alternative power system, which would mean a photovoltaic power system with a, a good sized battery bank. And most of the ham rigs are 12 volt anyway, so you can tap, tap directly into your battery bank. You don't have to go through an inverter. People need to have that as the ultimate backup, because if the internet goes down, we could see a situation where there's martial law in a few cities, but unless patriots can communicate, we're going to be powerless. We really need to be able to, to push to talk, as they say. So get a ham radio license, get together with your local ARRL affiliate ham radio club, get teamed up with an Elmer. An Elmer is like an old, old guy who teaches young guys how to use ham radio. Get, get linked up, matched up with a Elmer, and come up to speed on ham radio quickly. That's right, because communications is everything. The globalists will shut this down during their purge. We're just a wash in info today and don't appreciate it. But the power of ham radio, and I know a lot of patriots have been into this forever, is that, is that we're going to have those communications. And then you can tune in anonymously, you know, even having you know, the, the, the water band shortwave. But like you said, taking a course so you understand the new the nuances, sideband, single sideband, so you know what you're hearing. You notice that's what FEMA and all the systems use as their backup, the submarines. But notice they're now going to scrambled, fully scrambled, and trying to get police locally on fully scrambled so we can't hear what's going on. I mean, you can see this corporate Borg takeover. Uh, amazing information. All right, well, uh, Mr. Rawls, I want to thank you for joining us. It's been an amazing discussion. James Wesley Rawls' book, Survivors, a novel, The Coming Collapse, available at Infowars.com. I know you're awake, folks, but your friends and family may not be. Great book to get and give them every mind we unlock. You know, I think that's the biggest thing in preparedness, too, is also having friends and family informed and, and, and groups that can mutually aid each other. A final comment on that and anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, just one quick follow-up on ham radio. Even for folks that are on a very limited budget, for literally just $50, you can buy a pretty good quality all-band receiver so that you can at least listen to ham radio traffic, including sideband traffic. Uh, there's some very inexpensive ones, uh, some even under $30, like the Kato brand. It's K-A-I-T-O. And it's a very compact little receiver. I recommend that people, at, at the very minimum, get set up to listen to ham radio. But again, uh, Everything that you need to know in terms of physical preparation, you can find at my website at survivalblog.com. And uh, even before the physical preparation, I think it's important that people get right with God. Uh, if, if you haven't renewed your Christian faith, don't expect to be able to pull through this. I'm a Christian, and I think it's very important that people get right with God. You can't expect God's covenantal blessings unless you're in the covenant. Well said, and let's put your site back up. You have your IP address right there. We were showing the InfoWars address earlier. We can show the survival blog. It's uh, 
148, and we showed. And I've had my IT guys forever, so you got to promote this. I'm going to probably come out with a newspaper physically here soon, try to get out to people. And we'll probably like have our IP address real big on there as well. Amazing information. Uh, James Wesley Rawls, thank you so much for spending time with us. Very powerful interview today. Thank you so much, Alex, and may God bless all your listeners. You too, my friend, all of your readers. All right, there goes James Wesley Rawls. Uh, if you want to support us so we can keep getting the word out and try to take the capital we've got to get more reporters, a physical newspaper, so that there's physical copies of what's coming and what's happening out to everybody. Uh, if you'd like to see this operation continue, it costs a lot of money every year to run it. Think about visiting InfoWarsShop.com. I have found the most inexpensive, high-quality shortwave radios. I've tested these myself. We've been carrying these five years now at the lowest price that you're going to find and they're available at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com. They're all there. They have sideband, single sideband, solar powered, crank. This is what I have at my home. I've got quite a few of them so I can give them away to friends and family. But they're from, you know, $50 up to $200. They're all right there. And uh, the Kados are amazing. They're all really fantastic uh, systems. And I hope that you'll visit InfoWarsShop.com and get those a lot lower and you'll find them in stores. We also, for the water filtration, I've done the testing myself. We've got the side-by-side -side comparison. The ProPure is the best compared to all the gravity-fed filters. 10% discount uh, with the code WATER at InfoWarsShop.com. And lastly, we carry Survivors there, but we have now, because I, I sold these like a, six, seven years ago, but they sold out. They were, uh, I think I'm going to pull the shrink wrap off of this. This is the book, I was like 12, 13 years old, I think I was about 12, that crystallized my awakening. I was already into history books because I found they were so entertaining. I didn't know any better when I was like 10, started reading them. None dare call conspiracy ran out of print. They printed like 6 million, 5 million sold right away back in the 70s, 74 or so, the year I was born. And uh, then there was only like a million left. Those are all sold. It's been reprinted. We have it for a limited time, we're not even sure the publisher is going to continue it, discount it at InfoWarsShop.com. And you read this baby. I said 74. I haven't reread it since I got it again. I've scanned through it. 1971. I guess the one I got was a reprint in 74. Wow. 1971. This book lays it all out. Graphics, photos. It's only 140 pages long. And it's at InfoWarsShop.com. We also have When Disaster Strikes, Matthew Stein, A Comprehensive Guide for Emergency Planning and Crisis Survival. It's excellent. Uh, we also uh, have When Technology Fails by Matthew Stein, also very, very important, very encyclopedic. Uh, and then you got this, Strategic Relocation, North American Guide to Safe Places, third edition. And these are available, and you get a free citizen rule book and the rest of it at InfoWarsShop.com. Very important. And these maps coincide basically with what Rawls is saying. I hope we can avert this. I hope he's wrong. But I looked at the university studies. I've covered them here on air. Seven million people over nine years of the Great Depression starved to death. My grandfather and all those old World War II vets that I'd go deer hunting with growing up all said that in Freestone County, where my dad's family's from in East Texas, there were almost no deer, raccoons, possums. People make fun of people in the countryside, Michigan or Texas, eating possums. When your kids are starving to death, you eat possums. In fact, I'm told they taste like pumpkin pie whenever uh, you're starving to death. There were almost no animals left. That was people that knew how to grow crops, people that knew how to... Let me tell you something. The global... In Greece, it's totally collapsing. A few months into Argentina being collapsed in 2000, the Washington Post reported families in ripped business suits, like in an apocalypse... You know, these were wealthy people. When, when a trailer overturned with cows on it, with knives cutting blobs of red flesh out, gobbling it. There was a saying, as rich as an Argentine, or Argentine. They were per capita wealthier than we were just 50, 60 years ago, but they were ripped off over and over again. The globalists do plan this. We may be able to stop them, but I'm telling you, this is their plan. And... You already see with just being in a deep recession slash depression how mean people are getting. This is going to get crazy. So number one, buy firearms, learn how to use them. I'm, I'm not a tough guy. I'm just saying I've already thought about my family. I've got guns, and i got a lot of them, and I know how to shoot. You've seen that, you know, moderate shooting skills in our uh, Brothers in Arms, two videos we've done. 
you need to get ready. You need to learn how to use it. And you need to have water filtration, things like that. You, you need to be ready. Lastly, here at the end of the show, I want to show you uh, The Economist magazine. I haven't uploaded this yet. I shot a video. In fact, you know, we're taping the show tonight. Perhaps we should download my little attack on Queen Elizabeth at the uh, Barnes & Noble. I took my son yesterday. Because I've got like a little three-minute video we should air tonight if we have time. Um, of course, if we did air this, it would mean it was earlier in the show. Or maybe we'll air it right here at the end as we go to break. Yeah, we got time to do that, don't we? I'm so long-winded. Maybe we do. Uh, but uh, I bought this while I was there. The Economist. Please, can we start the engines now, Miss Merkel? The world economy. As if the Germans, who've bailed out close to a trillion dollars to the global banksters, saying it's for Greece when their economy isn't even that big, they are implying that if Germany, because they want Germany to be blamed for all this in the end, doesn't give unlimited trillions to the banksters whose debt this has really been uh, incurred by, that all of Europe's going to collapse. Notice Ireland, Greece, now Spain, Italy, Portugal. It's always, if this country gets the hundreds of billions it needs, which really goes to the bankers, everything will be okay. But if they don't, it's a depression. And then the next country, well, we'll see how Spain handles it. And then if you read the fine print, the banksters are the ones sinking the world economy so they can buy it up for pennies on the dollar. I mean, The Economist magazine throws this stuff directly in your face. All right, great job to the crew. Fabulous job this evening getting the word out. A pretty scary show, though. I hope you'll get this video, those of you watching on YouTube and other places, out to everyone. Again, if you want to support us, become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber. 15-day free trial running. You get to see all the films in higher def and nine years of work plus that's posted here at PrisonPlanet.tv of my 17 years of work. Until uh, tomorrow on the radio show, and until tomorrow, uh, well, we we'll won't have a radio show tomorrow. We'll have a radio show Sunday. It all blurs together. Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., and then back Monday, uh, 7 o'clock Central and 11 a.m. Central or 12 noon uh, Eastern for the radio show. Until then, this is Teleprompter Free Alex Jones signing off.